Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Doug and today I wanted to talk about a very familiar topic and that is the subject of LIDS, the giant retailer of fitted caps. Now they have been making moves in the market for a little over a year now. It started in early 2021 when they really started to uh, catch on to the bandwagon of uh, custom colorways, under visors, side patches, that sort of dominant trend in fitted caps. And with that, in early 2021, they started doing lots of in-store drops of these newer style caps and collections for all major league teams. So it really picked up steam in the summer of 21. And it is what has arrived recently as LidsHatDrop.com, which is a brand new entry in the winter of 2022, where Lids can release online collections of 5950 caps for all 30 major league teams in most cases. And they're totally right front and center with this trend of custom colorways, side patches, colored under visors, you name it. Of the things that we can see in these moves by LIDS, it was clear back in winter of 21 that LIDS was very slow, caught flat footed on this trend and they spent a lot of time trying to catch up with this. So they started with the in-store releases, probably took them a little while to build up designs and inventories that they could release. But once they got going, it seemed like the releases were coming quite frequently through the end of 2021. Now, Lids clearly needed a way to catch up with a big hitter like Hat Club, which had been doing this for some time. And there was also a number of smaller vendors that had gotten in the game way earlier than Lids keying into colorways that match sneakers and also pushing the envelope as far as major league team designs and just completely changing their colorways for different cap styles. Now, a lot of those same smaller vendors and the bigger ones like Hat Club were completely thriving from online drops of these new and different and to some very exciting design directions. Now, I would say one other goal for LIDS was probably to revamp the whole idea of in-store drops. Local buyers like myself in the 616 here, I was probably at the mercy of what was stocked in the LIDS stores around me, of which there are two within close proximity to me. But, um, you know, I might only get a shot at the Tigers, White Sox, Yankees, and Dodgers. So it's clear LIDS wanted to extend their reach for buyers and markets that wanted more than their local teams. So this brings us to some of the things that might not be visible right away when you look at LIDS HD or LIDS Hat Drop and why they decided to launch it at this time. I've had the CEO of LIDS, Tom Ripley, on my channel a couple of times for interviews. And we talked about this topic, but it was really before the all-out saturation that they've had with these fitted colorways. But it is important to rewind a little bit before Tom Ripley took over as CEO because he led a firm called Ames Watson that was part of the purchase of LIDS from a company called Genesco. So Ames Watson acquired LIDS from Genesco, which is mainly a footwear brand. But the biggest thing to remember here is that Fanatics kicked in about 10% of the purchase price of LIDS so that they could run the website. And Tom on my channel was very clear that uh, Fanatics really knows what they're doing with an online business. And so that was a good partnership for them to form at that time. Now, I did a couple of videos at the time this was all unfolding and noted how the websites all started to look the same um, between LIDS, Fanatics, Fans Edge, etc., and all the Fanatics brand companies. And then the other thing that happened at this time was the Access Pass got a whole new set of restrictions that most of us loyal LIDS customers were not used to. Now, my suspicion is, of course, because Fanatics is getting a cut of the online revenue, running that for LIDS, that it became unsustainable to offer discounts on the LIDS website items at the level they had previously been discounted with the Access Pass. So if you're tracking with me there, then when you think about the way the LIDS hat drop website looks, you'll notice right away that it has completely abandoned the look of that current LIDS.com website and any of the Fanatics family websites. It looks like a homegrown LIDS website, and I'm sure it is, because it looks an awful lot like customlids.com, 
which is LID's other business in terms of cap customization. So you can tell these are very sparse. There's no advertising of any kind on these sites. And uh, the functionality is not quite as slick as what you'd expect from a Fanatics-driven website. So you can tell that Lids Hat Drop is a homegrown creation. I would also say that you can get reminded of that pretty quickly because even when I've tried to look at Lids Hat Drop and filter for my size, uh, I've noticed those size filters don't work very well. It seems to always have my size available in every cap, but you can tell by a number of caps being sold out that that is clearly not true. So if we're putting two and two together here, my guess is that Lids is capturing 100% of the revenue at lidshaddrop.com. And they did this so that they didn't have to surrender any of that revenue or margin back to Fanatics for running the lids.com website. So it's a pretty smart move, cashing in on the hottest trend of fitted caps that we've seen in a long, long time, and making sure that you are capturing all that revenue and margin by creating your own website that appears to be outside of the Fanatics umbrella. So knowing all of that, it's uh, probably important to take a step back and say, did LIDS really accomplish their goals here with what they've done with LIDS Hat Drop and sort of this saturation campaign with all these different fitted collections. So I would say, yes, it sure seems like it. I mean, if you look at the most visible outcomes of this, uh, the weekly drops with all 30 teams seem to be selling out quickly. They are no longer stuck, apparently, in the Fanatics relationship and giving over a percentage of that revenue to Fanatics. They've got a better outlet for massive scale uh, in this custom colorway cap business model. You can just move lots of caps to people all over the country and not worry about what to stock in which stores. Bottom line, revenue and margin capture has got to be substantial. Lids Hat Drop has mostly been a success on any business measure that you might want to put against it. Behind the scenes at Lids, I also wanted to highlight a couple of management moves that uh, have happened. First off, Tom Ripley, who is the CEO the couple of times that he's been on my channel, has moved up to the level of executive chairman. And in press releases, it's indicated that he's going to concentrate on their international expansion. Now, Lids did just recently open four new storefronts in the UK. So I have to imagine that's part of an international uh, reach and expansion into Europe, and that's probably their first foothold there. I believe that the senior vice president of marketing up to that time was Britton Mon, and he was since promoted to president of Lids. And he, I'm imagining, focuses a lot more on the day-to-day -day operations of Lids that Tom probably used to. So there's been some moves there. So this new president, Brent Mon, appears to be committed to both the bread and butter, the store model that's gotten the lids to where they are right now, where you can get a lot of different hat styles in store besides just a fitted MLB cap, of course. Um, but he's also equally committed to the lids hat drop model. I think another great question to ask is, what did we as fitted cap collectors and enthusiasts really want out of this expansion of lids? I think many would agree that the ideal outcome was probably availability and choice of some of these new directions for design and fitted caps. Now, when LIDS comes in, they're offering a huge scale and they're offering multiple choices for almost every major league team, each collection. So that's a huge influx of new caps for people that want to capitalize on this trend and find their teams, their colors, etc. Now, secondly, I would have looked at this and said, well, I hope this is a relief valve that can ease prices a little bit because I've also done a few videos about how the price of the average fitted cap just kept going up and up and up. And now we're starting to see uh, percentages that exceed even that sustained period of getting from 35 bucks to 40 for a fitted. Now we're seeing uh, that ceiling just completely shattered. I would go so far as to say that the market is now oversaturated with way too many designs and colorways. I would paraphrase something that Tom Ripley said in one of my interviews with him, where um, talking about the Meek Mill Dream Chasers collection and its limited release, he said, there's nothing special about one in a million. And I might be paraphrasing a little bit, but you get the point, is that when there's so many caps out there, the market is saturated, 
you know, what made all these designs and colorways special is kind of gone away when you've got a million choices in front of you. I'd honestly say that in the next 12 months, I think that these multiple weekly releases from all these vendors, including Lids Hat Drop, are effectively going to kill the demand for fitted caps in this way. Now, I could be wrong. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know. Maybe this demand will keep going on. But I have to believe at some point we're going to reach total saturation for the people that keep spending money on these caps. I've actually checked out of this. I'm not paying $55, $60 for a cap. And I'm certainly not looking for any on the resale market that are well above that marker right now. I think it's just too much of a cash in right now that's happening all across the board. Now, the other thing is to a lot of viewers and myself included, we've kind of observed that there's a overlap now in the Venn diagram between sneaker collectors and fitted cap collectors. A colorway is the perfect way to differentiate a sneaker, and that crept pretty easily into the fitted cap world where you can organize around themes and change the colors and, and present a certain image or idea via the colorway. However, <laughs> unlike sneakers where there's any number of models of classic sneakers um, and different iterations of those sneaker models, um, there's only one 5950. So you've got a base model of cap that isn't changing. The construction is the same on every single one of them. You've got 30 MLB teams to mess around with. You've got a few different side patches for each team. But beyond that, you're not doing much to the base model of the cap except for selecting colors. So I just don't know that it has the limitless customization that you would get in the world of sneakers, where you can look at different sneaker models, different manufacturers, etc. This is all based on the standard 5950 made by New Era. Don't get me wrong, I still love baseball caps, I still love design, I still love sports logos and all that sort of thing which got me into baseball cap collecting in the first place. However, I think I've been pushed so far by this latest trend of customization of MLB caps that it almost has me looking back at the authentic collection caps. Just because they're so minimal, they're perfect. Um, you know, I've kind of rediscovered uh, just the base model caps and the alternates for all the teams. And I think if I pick up any fitted caps in the next six to 12 months, it's probably going to be authentic collection caps uh, for teams that I don't have yet. So anyways, I've got tons of videos on how to take care of the caps that you already own, how to stretch them, how to shrink them, how to maintain them. So if you're interested in more, scroll down. I've got links to some of my best videos on how to do those things down below in the description. And as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.